Chapter 11 Beggar and Quest You are listening at NovelFull.audio There were about five beggars sitting in the alley. Two looked to be drunk and out of their minds, two looked to be alert and the final one seemed to be half-asleep. The one that Arthur was kneeling in front of was the half-asleep beggar who was an old man. It was hard to tell how old he was with the dirt and grime on his face, but one could easily tell that he had been like this for a long time. Would you like some bread, old man? Arthur questioned again, seeing that the beggar had not responded. The old man moved after a few seconds, as a groan came from his mouth. Ugh! What do you want brat? The old beggar said with annoyance. This time Arthur didn't respond, though. Instead, he seemingly tapped on the air. Ding inventory opened items. Bread X5, replenishes hunger by a small amount, small water flask, replenishes stamina by a small amount, reusable, this was the basic inventory that a player would start off with in Morpheus Online. They would get some bread and a flask of water as the initial supplies. The players needed to eat and drink just like real life to maintain their optimum condition. If they didn't, they would get debuffs that would get worse the more time passed. The players could even starve and die if they went too long without food. The same happened if they did not drink water for too long as it would kill them even faster. The game truly stayed true to its promise and gave the players great immersion. Of course, as a game, it also allowed them to go beyond the limits of normal humans. For example, in the case of hunger and thirst, one could greatly increase the time needed for them to feel hungry or thirsty. This would rise with their level and the amount of food needed for them to fill their hunger and thirst bars would increase proportionally too. For the current Arthur, the five loaves of bread were something that could replenish his hunger bar by two and a half times. If he were a newbie player, he would have been quite wary of giving away his starting items. After all, who knew when they would need them? It could also put them at a disadvantage when compared to others. But Arthur wasn't worried. He knew he could easily obtain more later, and the benefits brought right now by giving some away would be exponentially greater. Arthur pulled the bread out of his inventory and held it in front of the old beggar. The man's glassy eyes scanned the bread before snatching it with astonishing speed. Um, seems like. Young, brats, still got some. Manners. The beggar spoke while snarfing down the loaf of bread. He talked with his mouth open and bits of food and spit would fall down from the side of his lips. Though it wasn't entirely his fault either, as he was missing a few teeth here and there too. Regardless, it was an unsettling and slightly disgusting sight that most players would not like. Arthur was unfazed though, as this was not even the lowest level of weirdness he had seen in the game. He let the old man finish eating and simply nodded at his words. The other beggars had also returned to their own thing, which was just sleeping. They seemed disinterested in the bread that Arthur had given the old beggar, which was a little strange if one thought about it. After finishing the bread, the old man licked his fingers for the crumbs and looked at Arthur, a bit more life in his eyes. So what would an adventurer brat like you want from a beggar? The old man finally asked with a knowing look. What any adventurer wants, a good adventure. Arthur replied with a smirk. Hmm, a good adventure, you say. How good? The old beggar questioned. This is it. Arthur's smile widened, knowing the hint. As good as it can get. He answered. Very well, if that's what you want, why don't you go get me some razor tusk boar meat? I heard it's really supple and juice when cooked right. The beggar replied. And as soon as he did, Arthur heard a notification. L.RG Ding Quest issued. Quest. Hunt for razor tooth boar. Info. The old beggar has asked you to get some razor tusk boar meat. Kill the beast to obtain its meat and give it to the beggar. Grade. Uncommon difficulty. Hard reward. Warning. The player is under dot leveled for this quest. Seeing the quest window, Arthur was pleased. This was exactly what he was looking for and would be the first quest to start off his journey. 
Granted, this was not something most would try as it was a hard difficulty quest. The quests in Morpheus Online had five difficulty levels. They were normal, intermediate, hard, extreme, and heroic. For a level 1 player like Arthur, hard difficulty was basically impossible. Even Arthur knew he had no way to kill the target of the quest at his current strength. But that doesn't matter, what matters is that I have the quest first. I can finish it after a bit of work. Arthur thought to himself. Alright, I'll get you some good meat. Arthur accepted. Haha. Ha. I'll see if you really can do that brat. The old beggar laughed, clearly not expecting Arthur to really do it. Young people should be careful not to take on more than they can handle. Another beggar sitting nearby warned. I know what I'm doing. Arthur replied. Humph. Just warning a fool, that's all. The beggar turned his back and closed his eyes, ignoring Arthur. Arthur chuckled in response and left the alley. It didn't matter much to him what the beggars thought, as he would be proving them wrong anyway. Now that I got the first quest. I need to get strong enough to be able to finish it. Arthur muttered as he moved towards the gate of the village. Chapter 12 First Mob Kill You are listening at NovelFull.audio The center of the village was the same place that Arthur had arrived at. It had a small fountain along with an old statue. The statue had been weathered to the point where it was hard to make out who it belonged to as the features of its face had faded away. All one could tell was the fact that it looked like a warrior. At the bottom of the statue, one could read a name. Kestrel. Arthur read the name after which the village was named. Now that I think of it. There was not much information about Kestrel even back then. People tried to look for it but there were no records. Arthur thought back to his past life. With the rise of the top dot ranked player in his hidden class, there was no lack of people that were looking for his secrets. While several of them were found, there were still many that were left undiscovered, Kestrel being one of them. No one knew why such a hidden class was hidden in a newbie village, but they knew that it had something to do with Kestrel. Maybe I'll learn more this time around. Arthur thought to himself and looked around. There were still players appearing at the fountain, though most of them looked to be frustrated. Damn it. How are these mobs so fast? Aren't they supposed to be starter mobs, how do we even kill them if we can't catch them? And they kill us in just six attacks. That takes them like three seconds. There was no lack of players who had returned to the fountain after having died. It was the respawn point and also the place where newbies would arrive. Arthur who heard their complaints couldn't help but chuckle. It really was quite hard for them at the start. After all, they didn't know how to use their game avatars that well. Arthur recalled. It was a matter of time before they would get adjusted and adapt to killing the beasts. Even if there were other VR games in the past, they were not on the level of Morpheus Online and also had aim assist that helped the players a lot. But there was nothing of that sort in this game. Arthur shook his head, dispelling his distracting thoughts and focused on the next task. Player status. He said in his mind. Ding player status name. R's her level. One class. None title. None HP 100% MP 100% stamina. 100% hunger. 100% experience. 0% strength. One toughness. One agility. One dexterity. One vitality. One wisdom. One intelligence. One will. One right hand. Old dagger left hand. Empty chest armor. Hemp shirt leg armor. Hemp pants boots. Old leather shoes bag. Old satchel one. Inspect Arthur looked at the stats that were nothing special. These were the stats that everyone started off with and they were all set to 1 by default. This was also why the balance of Morpheus Online was maintained for a long time for newbies. Everyone started off at the same point, and it was up to them to explore and find opportunities to improve their stats. 
There were several ways to do so, like getting better equipment, doing quests, getting titles, or simply leveling up. And most people did all of the above with leveling up being the most basic way of improving themselves. This was exactly what Arthur was intending to do right now. Killing the starting mobs won't be an issue but once I do kill them all, it will take a while for them to respawn. Time that I do not wish to waste. If I am to make the most of my advantages, I cannot afford to waste even a second. Arthur thought to himself as he walked towards the gate of the village. At the gate, two guards could be seen standing. Their titles floated on top of their heads, glowing in a green color showing that they were allies. This was something only the players could see of course. But despite passing, by them the guards didn't really seem to be bothered. They looked to be bored and were only here to do the bare minimum and nothing else. The only time they would act would be if the mobs would get too close to the town. While they looked pretty harmless right now, Arthur knew they were far beyond any of the players. There was no lack of fearless players who had teased or even fought them outright in his past life. Safe to say, their end was swift and they were killed in just a single attack. Each of the guards here are supposed to be level 20 on an average. That is far beyond what any player will have for the coming few weeks. Arthur thought a few things. Hmm, can I test that strategy here later? A plan formed in his mind. He continued to his destination and soon arrived at an open plain. Here tens of players could be seen trying to kill what looked like rabbits. Catch it. Don't let it slip again. Shit. Goddamned rabbits. The players cursed and shouted, unable to fight against the small beast. But Arthur knew that even if they were starting mobs, they were special. All beings in the world of Morpheus Online have magic in them. Even if they are not able to utilize it directly, they are still strengthened by it. One would be making a mistake if they took these rabbits as common animals. Arthur thought to himself before pointing a finger towards the rabbits. Inspect. Upon saying the command, a new window opened in front of Arthur showing that the skill had been activated. Ding inspect successful. Target. Gray Plains Rabbit Rank. Common Level. 1 HP 100% MP 76% inspect was the basic skill that all players started off with and cost nothing to use. It was also something that many newbie players didn't know at the time of the launch, simply because there was no tutorial. Need to wait till their MP falls to zero, that'll be my chance. Arthur watched the players fight and let them exhaust the mobs. He continued to use inspect every 10 seconds, checking the MP of the rabbits. And a couple minutes later he saw one of the rabbits' MP falling to 0% now. Seeing that his chance had arrived, Arthur jumped into the fray. He skillfully weaved between the exhausted players, surprising them. Hey! Watch it, they shouted, but he didn't care. The Grey Plains rabbit heard him approaching with its long ears and gazed at him. Then in the next moment, it jumped towards him. Ha! He's gonna die soon. The way to survive is to dodge their attacks, not tank them. Someone snarked. Arthur simply focused on the target ahead and let the attack hit him. Thwack. The rabbit slammed into his body with a force that shouldn't be possible for a beast that size. 0.1% HP, just one hit had taken off one dot tenth of his health. This was also why the other players were frustrated with the rabbits. They were too fast and a mere six hits were enough to kill them. But Arthur didn't show the same response. Instead, he smiled. Just like I thought. They strengthened their attacks with their skill. If their MP is drained, they cannot do it and their attacks will weaken. Arthur looked at his remaining HP and knew that he had more than enough to sustain this. Thwack. But a mere moment later, he was struck by the rabbit again. 0.1% HP, another fraction of his HP was shaved off and the rabbit seemed intent on taking all of it again. But just as it was about to bounce away from Arthur's body, his hand moved nimbly. Kiai. 
the beast let out a painful cry as the dagger slashed at its sides, leaving a long cut. Critical hit. 0.7% HP, bingo. Arthur smiled widely and pounced at the beast again. The pain had stunned the rabbit and slowed its response. It gave Arthur enough time to stab the beast once more. Fatal hit. 0.3% HP, Grey Plains Rabbit has been killed. Experience obtained. 10% Arthur's experience bar increased by 10% showing that he only needed to kill 9 more such rabbits to level up. So, far, so good. Let's keep it up. Arthur immediately rushed to the next target, leaving the other players flabbergasted. Chapter 13 Level Up You are listening at NovelFull.audio Arthur's actions were no less than shocking to the players as he was quite literally the first player to have gotten a kill. And this kill might have been the first kill of the entire game. But it didn't slow down Arthur at all. No, he was ready to kill more of them. Inspect. Ding inspect successful. Target. Grey Plains Rabbit Rank. Common Level. 1 HP 100% MP 2%. He quickly found a suitable target and pulled its attention which was easy as the rabbits would attack the closest person. Arthur's sudden interference made the original attackers confused and made them lose focus. Thwack. Unfortunately for them this also meant getting hit. The player's HP fell to zero and he let out a scream. A-H. Why you fuck. Before the player could curse, he was sent back to the respawn. Phew. Thanks for taking the hit. Arthur thanked before lunging forward with his dagger. Being a starter weapon, its reach was meager and was one of the reason why the players were having such a hard time killing the Grey Plains rabbits. But for Arthur, this was something he was very familiar with and used the dagger with great skill. Each attack struck the rabbit precisely, cutting off chunks of its HP. 0.2% HP, 0.1% HP, critical hit. 0.7% HP, Grey Plains Rabbit has been killed. Experience obtained. 10% in just 20 seconds, another rabbit had been killed and Arthur's experience bar rose again. Without even stopping for a moment, he inspected the next Grey Plains Rabbit that was out of MP before attacking it. One by one, the corpses of the Grey Plains Rabbits started littering the area. The players watching it all were helpless as their targets kept on disappearing. How is he even doing this? Yeah, he was hit three times but his HP is still at 70%. How's that possible? Didn't the other player's HP fell to less than 50% with that many hits? The players had still not understood the method that Arthur was utilizing. Though it could also be said that he had taken advantage of the players in a way. This was also the reason why he had gone to take the quest first. It was simply the more efficient option rather than to just wait in the field. That way, he had obtained the quest and also let the players deplete the MP of the Grey Plains Rabbit. Am I reaping the fruits of others' labor? Arthur wondered momentarily, before pushing the thought out of his mind as a new notification popped up. 100% experience obtained player Arzher has leveled up. 5 free stat points obtained HP, stamina and hunger have been replenished. This was exactly what Arthur had been waiting for and he was prepared for it too. Alright, time to get stronger. Arthur opened his stat screen. Player status. Name. R's her level. 2 class. None title. None.hp, 70%. 100% MP 100% Stamina 39% 100% Hunger 91% 100% Experience 100% 0% Attack 1, 3 Toughness 1, 3 Agility 1 Dexterity 1 Vitality 1, 2 Wisdom 1 Intelligence 1 Will. 1. Arthur picked his attack, defense and vitality as the stats to be increased. 
these were the ones that he needed the most as of now. The other players might not make the same choice as him though. Since they were unable to keep up with the Grey Plains Rabbits, it would make sense for them to pick Dexterity and Agility as the main stats along with either Defense or Vitality. They knew the starting mobs were weak and could die in few hits. It was just that they were a little too fast for them and they needed to match that to be able to touch them. For Arthur though, keeping up with the rabbits wasn't as much of an issue. He could already track their attack patterns and only needed to dodge beforehand. And even if they did strike him, the weakened attacks would only take 10% of his HP. This was tolerable and wouldn't matter much to him as he could easily cover it with a level up, which he already had now. This should make things easier. Arthur quickly scanned his surroundings finding that there were still plenty of Grey Plains rabbits left. He turned to the right and rushed towards an empty spot between a Grey Plains rabbit and two players. The two players were seemingly trying to do a pincer attack on the Grey Plains rabbit, but now there was a third factor coming into the mix. Pai. What? The players were stunned upon finding Arthur appearing in between. His attack accurately struck the rabbit on its back, making it cry in pain. 0.35% HP, good, the power has certainly increased. Arthur was pleased with the damage he had dealt. Hey! He's stealing our mobs. The players were certainly not pleased with him though. Thwack! Unfortunately, the player didn't realize the Grey Plains rabbit had bounced back and hit him from the back. Arg. No. A player has died since the player was struck from the back, the rabbit's attack had resulted in a critical hit that killed him instantly. It'll take them quite some time to learn battle focus. Arthur fully intended to take advantage of the weaker opponents and unskilled players. The other player jumped back seeing his companion die from the Grey Plains rabbit and wanted to retreat. Shit. Fighting one rabbit with two people is already tough, forget me alone. The player cursed to himself. But how the hell is he able to kill them he thought upon seeing Arthur kill the rabbit. Grey Plains rabbit has been killed. Experience obtained. 5% the experience gain has reduced by half. I'll barely have enough for another level up after killing the mobs here. Arthur counted the Grey Plains rabbits, finding there to be 22 of them left. Just the right amount for me he muttered and rushed to another target. Arthur had to be fast and kill as many rabbits as possible as he knew the players would soon figure out his method. It wasn't hard in the first place and only involved letting the rabbits deplete their MP. And once even a single player leveled up among them, they would be able to flip the odds very quickly. Grey Plains Rabbit has been killed. 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 Arthur was like a wolf among the rabbits, killing them with ease. Three hits was the maximum he needed to kill them and two was the average. With the increase in his attack stat, his critical hits were even enough to kill them in one strike. His experience bar kept on rising and ten minutes later, Arthur had killed most of the Grey Plains rabbit on the field. I did it. But he wasn't the only one who had succeeded at killing. Ha ha ha. I killed it. Another player had managed to kill a Grey Plains rabbit. So it starts. Arthur quickly pulled up his stat screen. Player status. Name. R's her level. 2 class. None title. None HP, 90% MP 100% stamina. 54% hunger. 81% experience. 95%. One more. I need one more. Arthur looked around for another rabbit. We need to wait target the rabbits who have been fighting for a while. They get weaker then. The players spoke to each other. This confirmed Arthur's thoughts, and he knew he wouldn't be able to hunt here much longer. There, that should be enough. Arthur finally spotted a rabbit that had just spawned at the corner. The respawn of the Grey Plains rabbits was not triggered before this since there were a set number of them and none of them were killed. 
but with Arthur's slaughter, they were finally respawning. Perfect timing too. Arthur broke away from the crowd, much to their surprise. Finally, he's leaving. Yeah. Now we can hunt in peace and not get our kills stolen. Stolen. We weren't even able to damage them once before. Can we really say stolen? The players were relieved seeing him gone. Russell Russell a bush at the corner of the area moved and a grey plains rabbit jumped out of it. Critical hit. Fatal hit. 0.100% HP, grey plains rabbit has been killed. Experience obtained. 5% 100% experience obtained player Arzher has leveled up. 5 free stat points obtained HP, stamina and hunger have been replenished. As soon as the notification rolled in, Arthur immediately left the area. He didn't want others to notice him any longer. After all, he had already become the center of attention for quite a lot of people now. He wouldn't be surprised if news about him would be seen tomorrow. Arthur simply went back to Kestrel Village and entered an empty alley. Now let's see, he pulled up the stat screen again. Chapter 14 Level 3 and a sewer you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Having killed the newly spawned Grey Plains Rabbit, Arthur had obtained the last bit of experience that was needed for the next level. Player Status Name Ars Her Level 3 Class None Title None HP.100% MP 100% Stamina 100% Hunger 100% experience. 100%. 0% strength. 3. 4 toughness. 3. 4 agility. 1. 2 dexterity. 1. 2 vitality. 2. 3 wisdom. 1 intelligence. 1 will. 1. This time Arthur didn't focus on any specific stat. Instead, he chose to spread his points equally across the physical stats. I'll need all of them and a lot more if I'm to do this. I need to level up more. Arthur thought to himself as he finished the distribution. Though. I also need better equipment. Arthur muttered and pulled up another window. Ding. Right hand. Old dagger. Attack. 1.2, Durability. 70 out of 100, left hand. Empty, Attack. 1.1, Chest Armor. Hemp Shirt, Defense. 1, Durability. 80 out of 100, Leg Armor. Hemp Pants, Defense. 1, Durability. 95 out of 100, Boots. Old Leather Shoes, Defense. 1. Durability. 100 out of 100, bag. Old satchel, storage slots. 10. The starter equipment wasn't great to begin with and its durability was also going down quickly. It hadn't even been an hour since the launch of the game after all and the durability of his weapon was already at 70. I'll just have to find something myself. Arthur muttered to himself. He had an idea about where to find several pieces of equipment on the village and it wouldn't be long before they'll be available to him. Though if I want a free weapon, that sword will be a perfect fit. Arthur recalled. To equip it, I need to be at level 4 but I think I'll gain enough experience for that just trying to get to it. He estimated. Having made an immediate goal in mind, Arthur made his way to another location. This time though, it was a location that was located within the village itself. Let's see. It should be somewhere around here if I recall correctly. Arthur wandered through a few alleys while looking at the ground. After a few minutes of search, he finally found what he was looking for. There it is. Arthur spotted a stone grate on the ground. It was made from the same type of rocks that the rest of the alley road was made with but was carved into the form of a grate instead. Arthur peeked into the stone grate, unable to see the bottom that was hidden in darkness. I won't be able to see inside there. Need a torch. 
Arthur looked around for something to make a torch with. Right now he had no coins to use. Normally one would get them by killing the mobs and selling their materials, but Arthur hadn't done that. I couldn't wait and take the corpses there after all, it was far too hectic and would only bring more ire. Arthur had intentionally left the corpses behind for the other players. After all, if he had taken them after kill stealing the mobs, it wasn't unlikely for the players to be offended. And if he pissed off enough of them, they could simply gang up on him and kill him. He definitely did not want to die so early in the game. And while he wouldn't face any losses right away, if he died a few times, he would be forced to log out from the game too. This was something he needed to avoid at all costs, as logging out this early would mean that he would have no money to use in real life. He had already spent most of his money in getting to the gallery after all. And while he did have a plan to get money in real life, for that he still needed to do some things in the game. It's imperative I do things according to what I planned or things might spiral out of control. Arthur reminded himself. His current problem of needing a torch was soon solved though as he found suitable items needed to make them. There was no lack of trash in some of the alleys and Arthur simply picked up some old wood and tattered rags. Then he went to the back of the smithy and found a puddle of waste oil. The smithy used quite a lot of oil and stored it in some barrels at the back of it. Arthur had no issues in getting some of this waste oil and soaking the tattered rags in it. He then wrapped the rags around three wooden sticks and turned them into torches. As for how to light them. It was an easy task. Clank Arthur scraped the side of his dagger against a rock, creating sparks that ignited the oil-soaked rags. The ignition happened slowly as the oil was impure, but with a little coaxing Arthur now had a blazing torch. That takes care of it. And I'll have an extra two to spare as well. Arthur hung the extra torches from his satchel and jumped down into the manhole. The distance from the surface to the bottom of the manhole wasn't that far, being a mere three meters. The orange glow of the torch illuminated the new area allowing Arthur to see the murky and smelly sewers. Ding location discovered. Kestrel Village Sewers Quest Issued. Quest. Investigate the sewers. Info. You have chanced upon the sewers of the Kestrel Village. Search and see what secrets it hides, but also beware of the dangers that lurk within it. Grade. Uncommon difficulty. Intermediate reward. Guess it can still be triggered if I just enter without meeting the NPCs. Arthur was pleased. This location was something that most players wouldn't come until they were given a quest that directed them here. But Arthur had directly arrived here, prompting the game to generate an exploration-type quest for him. Well. No direction to but forward. Arthur started walking straight into the tunnel. And after a minute of walking, he heard a noise. Squeak. Chapter 15 Dire Sewer Rats You are listening at NovelFull.audio Arthur looked at the source of the sound, knowing exactly what he was about to face. Time to get ready. Arthur held the torch in his left hand and extended it sideways, while holding his dagger in the right. With the immersive freedom that Morpheus Online provided, the crude torch that Arthur had made could also be used as a weapon. Of course, its stats weren't good to begin with and the best it could do was burn. Squeak. The sound was heard again, as a dark silhouette moved at the edge of the illuminated area. Arthur kept his eyes focused on it, ready to act before it moved again. With a loud squeak, a large rodent jumped out of the darkness. Arthur immediately acted, swiping his dagger towards the large rodent while also twisting his waist to avoid it from hitting his torso. 0.15% HP, a damage notification popped up, confirming that Arthur had successful hit the large rodent. Inspect. Arthur used the only skill he had, revealing the information about the enemy. Ding inspect successful. Target. Dire sewer rat rank. Common level. 2 HP, 75% MP 100% The enemy in question was a rat that was about the size of a house cat. Its eyes were dull black in color, while its fur was dark gray. 
It had a long pink tail that was nearly the same size as its body. This was the common mob that could be found in sewers, and for the current one, it was the dire sewer rat. They should provide a bit more experience than the Grey Plains rabbits. Arthur thought to himself as he lunged towards the rat. Clang. But this time, the foe reacted accordingly. It shifted to the side with great agility, letting Arthur's old dagger strike the wall. But he wasn't one to be thrown off by just this, as he still had another weapon. Squee. The dire sewer rat let out a painful cry as the torch singed its fur. Thud. At the same time, the shaft of the torch also struck it, knocking it backwards. 0.21% HP, the damage from the burning torch, its actual strike and the rat knocking into the wall had combined into a decent number. Though at the same time, it had infuriated the pest. Squeak. The foe let out a loud cry that echoed across the sewer tunnel. A moment later, the sound of scuttling could be heard before tens of similar cries echoed from the distance. This'll get tough if I don't get rid of it quickly, Arthur became serious and rushed towards the dire sewer rat. With his level up, he had improved his agility and dexterity, both of which allowed him to wield the dagger a lot faster. 0.3% HP, 0.12% HP, 0.23% HP, dire sewer rat has been killed. Experience obtained. 5% in less than 10 seconds, Arthur had killed the first rat. One down, several more to go. Arthur couldn't relax though as he could hear several more approaching. Squeak. 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 Inspect. Arthur used inspect on all the dire sewer rats that were appearing. Dot there were a total of six dire sewer rats that had appeared, but among them one was larger than all others. Ding inspect successful. Target. Large dire sewer rat rank. Uncommon level. 3 HP 100% MP 100% an uncommon mob right from the start. Guess this expedition will be interesting. Arthur narrowed his eyes and tightened his grip on the old dagger. He waved the burning torch around, intimidating the rats and making them take a few steps back. I'll need to separate them first, Arthur knew fighting them together could easily get dangerous. Thankfully, these mobs were scared of fire and wouldn't jump Arthur right away. And after a little threatening, Arthur managed to separate two dire sewer rats from the other four. Handling two shouldn't be an issue, Arthur reckoned. Squeak. The two rats weren't pleased though, and directly rushed at Arthur, fully intending to chew up his legs. Slam. But before they could do so, Arthur fiercely kicked one away while stabbing the dagger towards the other. 0.12% HP, 0.2% HP, both of the rats cried in pain, which Arthur took advantage of. He waved his dagger several times, not letting the two rats respond in time. Dire sewer rat has been killed. Dire sewer rat has been killed. Experience obtained. 10% the two dire sewer rats were killed in less than 30 seconds, after which Arthur rolled to the side. E.E.K. The level 3 dire sewer rat had taken the chance to leap at Arthur. Being higher leveled, it was stronger and also had slightly higher intelligence. But with Arthur's dodging, all damage was avoided and the level 3 rat only ended up missing its target. Whoosh Arthur took that chance to throw the flaming torch at the other three dire sewer rats and decided to focus on the larger one. He swung his dagger twice, hitting it successfully. Uh, but Arthur wasn't safe either and was actually scratched by the large rat. His HP reduced by 10% in one hit. It was a large number, considering the fact that Arthur was at the same level as the large dire sewer rat. Splat. But he didn't let that distract him from attacking non-stop. The old dagger looked like a silver glint under the light of the torch as Arthur took several swipes at the large dire sewer rat. Large dire sewer rat has been killed. Experience obtained. 10% being the same level as him, Arthur had gained a higher amount of experience raising its bar to the 25% mark. Looks like reaching level 4 won't be too hard. 
Arthur smiled as he sprinted towards the three remaining dire sewer rats. He stomped one of them while blocking another one that was leaping towards him. Crack. A sickening crack was heard as Arthur's foot seemingly broke the dire sewer rat's bones. Critical hit. 0.6% HP, target has been immobilized. With one of the rats out of the fight, Arthur easily fought the other two, finishing the fight in four minutes. Experience obtained. 15%. Chapter 16 A Fork in Quest You are listening at NovelFull.audio Having killed six dire sewer rats and one large version, Arthur's experience bar had risen to the 45% mark. At this rate, I might just level up before I even cover half of the sewer. Arthur estimated as he chopped the tails of the dire sewer rats and stored them in his bag for later. Though at the same time, he got a bad feeling about it. I don't think the rats were supposed to appear this early on. Arthur recalled the information from guides, finding it to be a bit incorrect. It was impossible for him to tell if it was an inaccuracy due to his own memory or perhaps some change in the sewer dungeon itself. But it's still possible in Morpheus. The AI will change the dungeons and other areas according to how the players progress. Arthur thought. With the scale of Morpheus Online, the only way to run it was through the control of AI. Several other Vermorps were also controlled by AIs, though their capabilities also varied. It could be said that Morpheus Online had set a new standard in game AIs too as its main AI was realms apart from all others. But that wasn't all as Morpheus Online didn't just have one AI, but rather several. Each of these AIs were focused on different tasks of the game but could also switch between them if needed. After all, with the complexity that Morpheus Online brought and the variable that the players were, it was close to impossible to simulate how things could go. Because of this, only an AI could manage everything. Even the developers of the game were unable to interfere too much in the game. This was also why the game had managed to become as popular as it had in the past. Drip 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 while Arthur was thinking all this though, the faint sound of water could be heard from the distance. Guess I should be close to the sluice gate. Arthur moved the torch around, getting an idea of the area. And sure enough, he saw a flat metal gate blocking a channel at the side. Arthur himself stood on a small bridge, under which the channel passed. Though right now this channel seemed to be empty, with only a little water at the bottom. Looking at the left side, Arthur saw the source of the sound. It was actually the wall of the tunnel. There was water leaking out from the bricks that were attached to the side of the sluice gate. Fine cracks could also be seen on it and moss was growing on them, further weakening the bricks. Quest updated. Quest. 1. Investigate the sewers. 2. Inform the village head about it or release the sluice gate. Info. 1. You have chanced upon the sewers of the Kestrel village. Search and see what secrets it hides, but also beware of the dangers that lurk within it. 2. You have discovered that the sluice gate has been closed for a long time and has become damaged. If it is left as it is, there is a great chance that the sewers might flood during the next rain. Inform the village head about it or open it to release the pressure. Grade. Uncommon difficulty. Intermediate reward. There it is, the quest fork. Arthur was waiting for this. From here, he had two options to complete the quest. The first was to take the easy route and inform the village head about the situation. This would finish the quest immediately and one would also get a reward that was decent for the start of the game. But that will be a waste. Arthur had another thing on his mind. After all, he knew the full extent of this quest and the different rewards it had depending on what one did. With that in mind, Arthur moved forward and reached a four-dot way split. From here, he turned to the left, intending to head to a specific location. They should be right here. Arthur was ready for an ambush. Squeak. And just on time, he heard several cries of the dire sewer rats. Using the torch, Arthur spotted about five of the dire sewer rats approaching him. No large ones this time. 
Arthur wasn't too disappointed, as he knew he'd have many more opportunities. Whoosh! He directly threw the torch in the middle of the rats, forcing them to split up. The torch was half burnt already and Arthur knew it wouldn't last that long, so this was a better way of utilizing it. 0.5% HP, 0.5% HP, 0.5% HP, several damage notifications popped up as the torch burned the dire sewer rats. Arthur rushed to the two rats that had spread to the right. With a few attacks and efficient dodges, he killed both of them. Dire sewer rat has been killed. Dire sewer rat has been killed. Experience obtained. 10% but in the time that he had taken to kill the two rats, the other three had also rushed him. Arthur was bitten twice, losing 10% of his HP again. Though when the third rat was about to bite him, he simply kicked it away. Squee. This caused the rat to be knocked into the burning torch, causing more damage to it. Dire sewer rat has been ignited. 0.15% HP, 0.12% HP, Arthur's luck seemed to have played in and one of the rats was now inflicted with a damaging debuff. It also caused the rat to run around in pain, giving Arthur time to kill the other two. Experience obtained. 10% dot and once the two were killed, he turned his attention to the burning rat. The burning debuff had already drained more than 70% of the rat's HP anyways. Crack with a stomp, Arthur ended its life, giving him more EXP. Experience obtained. 5% with his experience bar at 70%, Arthur only needed 6 more dire sewer rats to level up. But before that, he had another task at hand. There's the release mechanism for the sluice gate. Arthur spotted a lever that controlled the gears that locked the sluice gate in place. Chapter 17 Secret Area You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The original torch that Arthur had brought had died down by now. Clank Arthur struck the stone floor and ignited the second torch, illuminating the tunnels once more. Now had the lever in his sights and walked up to grasp it. He held it firmly before pushing it downward. Creak the lever made an unpleasant creaking sound, while rust fragments fell off from it. It was tough to move it, but Arthur forced it to do so. And when it finally came in the resting position, the gears around it started to move. The gears pulled on the chains that hung from the sluice gate and pulled it back up. Whoosh! As soon as the slightest gap was created, water went rushing past the gate and flowed through the sluice into the distant channels. It took five minutes for all the water to drain and the channel to become empty again. Quest updated. Quest. 1. Investigate the sewers. 2. Inform the village head about it or release the sluice gate. Info. 1. You have chanced upon the sewers of the Kestrel village. Search and see what secrets it hides, but also beware of the dangers that lurk within it. 2. You chose to open the sluice gate and released the pressure. Some new areas might now be available to explore for you. Grade. Uncommon difficulty. Intermediate reward. There we go. Seeing the quest updating as intended, Arthur was pleased. This was the first secret of the Kestrel Village sewers. If one chose to release the sluice gates, they would be able to access the areas that were once flooded with water. That was also where Arthur's main goal in coming here laid. Though getting there is a pain in itself, the path is a messy and winding and is basically a maze. Arthur recalled the long rant that he had read in his past life. The original player that had discovered this secret had ended up dying nearly 50 times before he had found the right path. It didn't help that there were several traps and dangers around the way too that were difficult to dodge for newbies. Done with this step of the quest, Arthur turned back and went to the fork he had originally come from. There, he took the opposite path and followed it, until he heard familiar noises. Squeak. Here we go again. Arthur got ready for a battle. He quickly used inspect and saw three dire sewer rats approaching. They were all at level 2 and were easy for him to handle. Dire sewer rat has been killed. Dot dire sewer rat has been killed. 
Dire Sewer Rat has been killed. Experience obtained. 15% five minutes later, he had successfully killed the three foes, making his experience bar rise by 15%. Three more and I should level up. Arthur was looking forward to leveling up again. In order to finish the quest given by the beggar, he needed to be at least level 10 and have decent equipment. Thus the faster he reached that point, the better it would be. Though at this point, there shouldn't be anyone other than me that has reached level 3, right? Arthur recalled that the record in his past life was 15 hours. That's how it had taken for the first player to reach level 5. It was something that was easily broken in the future, as there were various means to power level other users. But in the current time, the only saving grace they had was sheer hard work and exploration. If I compare myself though, I should have set a record too. Arthur had reached level 3 in less than 2 hours which was an unseen achievement even in his past life. He didn't care much about setting records though, as long as his goals were fulfilled. And while he wouldn't mind showing off, this wasn't the time for it. After all with how new the game was, the players didn't even know what was classified as a good achievement. Squeak. After 10 more minutes of exploration, Arthur came across another dire sewer rat. Having become used to them already, Arthur skillfully dodged all its jumps and swings before stabbing the pest with his old dagger. 0.25% HP, 0.15 HP, fatal hit. 0.6% HP, the HP of the dire sewer rat fell to zero and Arthur's experience bar rose once more. Just two more to go, shouldn't be hard. Arthur sped up now, hoping to reach the bottom level of the sewer. The path to getting there was quite winding and went through narrow parts, but he managed to get through them all accurately. After all, he had memories of his past life on his side. No trap could touch him and no beast could ambush him. Squeak. Squeak. On his way down, he finally heard the sound of dire sewer rats again. But this time he could tell that they were different. Ding inspect successful. Target. Large Dire Sewer Rat X2 Rank. Uncommon Level. 3 HP 100% MP 100%, looks like I'll be going over the needed amount right away. Arthur wasn't dissuaded. Whoosh the first thing he did was to ignite the third torch and throw it towards the two large Dire Sewer Rats. Large Sewer Rat has been ignited. His luck was rolling, and he managed to debuff one of the adversaries right away. Let's see what you got, overgrown rat. Arthur lunged with his dagger drawn. Slick. His dagger cut through the hide of the animal, causing it to bleed non-stop. Arthur weaved between the two beasts while striking them like a master hunter. And after five minutes of battling them their HPs zeroed out again. Large dire sewer rat has been killed. Large dire sewer rat has been killed. Experience obtained. 20% experience bar has reached 100% player Arzher has leveled up. 5 free stat points have been granted. But before Arthur could get to distributing his free stat points, his excitement was interrupted by something else. Squeak. 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 That doesn't sound good. Arthur heard similar sounds and knew he was in trouble. 1, 3, 6, 8. Arthur counted using inspect. There are 8 large dire sewer rats coming my way. He knew fighting them head on was not an option. Even with his torches, it would be difficult. There's only one way. I need to get that weapon. Chapter 18 Black Tear Short Sword You are listening at novelfull.audio while Arthur had leveled up, eight large dire sewer rats were still something he would have a hard time dealing with. It wasn't even a question about stats, but numbers, and the area that he was in. If this was an open field, I could kite them, but the sewer tunnels are far too narrow for that. I don't have extra torches to distract them either. Arthur thought to himself while hoping that his plan would work. The only thing he needed to avoid at all costs was dying. 
If he died, it would mess up the next few steps and prevent him from fully carrying out his plans. He would also lose a great advantage. Arthur's frantic steps echoed in the tunnels while the large dire sewer rats chased after him. The distance between the two parties was hard to estimate, but from the rat sounds, Arthur estimated them to be ten seconds away. He ran with all his power, while his stamina kept on depleting. Warning. Stamina at 30%, Arthur heard the notification but didn't get distracted. Sprinting like this consumed higher amounts of stamina and he had already known this. He also knew how much stamina was consumed while sprinting. This was why he wasn't worried about draining too much stamina either. Thankfully I got the level up just before this and that restored my stamina. Otherwise I might have been cutting too close. Arthur thanked his luck. Warning. Stamina at 10%, the second warning for stamina drain came just when Arthur saw his goal. There it is. Arthur almost shouted. He was in a circular junction to which several tunnels connected. And at the center of the junction there was a depression. Usually this would be filled with water and was one of the central reservoirs for overflow. But now that Arthur had released the sluice gate, all the excess water had flowed out leaving this place empty. And it was in this empty reservoir Arthur's goal laid. A skeleton. It seemed to have been here for a long time and was wearing an old tattered robe. The rest of its clothes had also rotted away but there was one thing that was still intact, a sheathed sword. Splash. Arthur jumped into the wet floor of the empty reservoir before rushing to the skeleton. The large dire sewer rats were now close, and he didn't have much time. He grabbed the sheathed sword before drawing it out. Inspect. Arthur used the skill. Ding inspect successful. Name. Black Tear Short Sword, Attack. 8.12, Durability. 90 out of 100, Equipping Requirement. Level 4, No Class Restrictions, Info. Allows the user to increase their swinging speed by 10% for 30 seconds while increasing stamina usage by 50%. Cooldown. 2 minutes this was the weapon that Arthur had been desiring. It was one of the best weapons one could get in the village and could actually be used by players till they reached level 7 or even level 10. It was intended to be used by a player of that level anyways, as getting to it was quite difficult and the dire sewer rats would make it hard to do so if they didn't have the stats to back it up. The only reason Arthur could even do it was due to the fact that he had experience from his past life. For new players that knew nothing about Morpheus Online, this would be an impossible task. This will work perfectly. Arthur put away his old dagger and switched to the Black Tear Short Sword. He then chugged the flask of water, restoring his stamina before assigning his free stat points. Player status name. R's her level. For class. None title. None HP.100% MP 100% stamina. 10%. 50% hunger. 100% experience. 100%. 10% strength. 4. 5 toughness. 4. 5 agility. 2. 4 dexterity. 2. 3 vitality. 3 wisdom. 1 intelligence. 1 will. 1 This time Arthur chose to improve his agility as the main as he needed the extra speed. He also increased his strength, toughness and dexterity too as general growth. And just as he finished doing this, the rats had also arrived. Squee. Splash. 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 They jumped into the empty reservoir, blocking Arthur's path. There were eight large sewer rats with all of them being level 3. Looks like this'll be our arena. Perfect. Arthur wasn't discouraged though. Splat. The first to move was Arthur as he slashed at the nearest large dire sewer rat. 0.8% HP, ahaha. Perfect. Even a basic attack does high damage. Arthur was pleased with the short sword. 
Not only did it improve his attack power, it also increased his reach simply due to the length of the weapon. BDNVL the the old dagger was small and forced him to get close to the enemies. But now, it was barely a matter of few strikes before they would be dead. 0.8% HP, 0.8% HP, large dire sewer rat has been killed. Critical hit. Fatal hit. 0.100% HP, large dire sewer rat has been killed. 0.8% HP, 0.8% HP, in less than 10 slashes, Arthur had killed off 5 of the large dire sewer rats. And all this was before any of them even had a chance to attack him. Squeak. But one of the large rats finally got the chance and it pounced at him. Won't work now. Arthur simply leaned back before kicking upwards. Thud. 0.5% HP, the rat that had tried to attack him got hit and was knocked back while also suffering some damage. 0.8% HP, 0.8% HP, large dire sewer rat has been killed. Arthur killed the two remaining large dire sewer rats before the final rat returned for an attack. Unfortunately for it, that was just pushing its death closer. 0.100% HP, large dire sewer rat has been killed. Experience obtained. 40%, ha. Already halfway to the next level. Arthur was pleased with his progress. This was certainly the fastest any player had possibly reached level 4, and it had been less than 4 in game hours since its launch. Chapter 19 A Quest Branch and the Boss Location You are listening at NovelFull.audio Arthur had already gained about 50% of the experience needed to level up to level 5. Reaching the next level shouldn't be that hard now. I'll probably be close to level 6 by the time I leave this sewer. Arthur said to himself before looking at the new weapon. And this'll be great for the coming few levels. The black tier short sword was made out of steel and its blade was quite simple looking. Its handle was wooden with a brown leather grip while at its cross guard there was a design. The design was of a black teardrop. This was one of the best weapons that could be acquired this early on for free. It was not to say that it was the strongest, as there certainly were others. But they couldn't be obtained for free. They would either have to be bought or obtained through finishing quests. Whereas the only requirement to obtain the Black Tear Short Sword was to explore the sewers enough to find it. And it wasn't even the intended reward of the sewer exploration quest either. Eddie E.T. It was merely an item obtained on the way. Having obtained the Short Sword though, Arthur was free to continue onwards. I still need to finish the quest. Arthur thought. Clack, but just as he was about to leave the reservoir, his foot hit the skeleton, making its bones scatter. Ah, I forgot about this thing, before Arthur could move on though, he saw a notification appearing. Quest updated. Quest. 1. Investigate the sewers. 2. Inform the village head about it or release the sluice gate. Completed. 3. Report to the village head about the skeleton in the reservoir and bring him proof. Info. 1. You have chanced upon the sewers of the Kestrel village. Search and see what secrets it hides, but also beware of the dangers that lurk within it. 2. You chose to open the sluice gate and released the pressure. Some new areas might now be available to explore for you. 3. You have found a skeleton in the reservoir of the sewer. Why has the skeleton appeared here and who does it belong to? Bring the skull back as a proof. Grade. Uncommon difficulty. Intermediate reward. Ha. Huh. Arthur was surprised by the quest update. This wasn't there in that guide. He couldn't remember about it at all. From what he had seen in the guide, it only said that one could obtain the black tier short sword from the skeleton, but nothing about another quest branch that could rise from. Though it doesn't really divert much from the original. I'll end up reporting to the village head anyways. Guess this will just give me extra rewards. Arthur reckoned. If anything, this was a good thing for him and reminded him that even if there were many guides that he had read before, 
there were bound to be mistakes or information that was still unknown at that time. Arthur knelt and picked up the skull of the skeleton. It had rolled to the side after his leg had struck it. Taking a look at it, Arthur used inspect feeling curious. Inspect successful. Quest item. Unknown human skull, info. A skull belonging to an unknown person found in the Kestrel village sewers. Bring it back as a proof to the village head. I expected too much. Arthur shook his head and went on to cut the tails of the large dire sewer rats, storing them in his bag. He then climbed up from the reservoir and looked around at the area. Which tunnel did I come from again? Arthur knew where he was supposed to go, but to determine that, he needed to know which tunnel he had come from first. The issue was that all the tunnels looked the same and the area was circular in shape. After a bit of thinking, he figured out the tunnel he had come from according to where the corpses of the rats were left. The tunnel that he was supposed to go to was the one that was directly opposite from the one he had entered. All the other tunnels basically ended up in either dead ends or traps that he certainly did not want to end up in. Arthur continued through the new tunnel and walked for about ten minutes, coming across no enemies. There should have been more of the rats by now, why are they not appearing? Arthur wondered. Squeak. As if on cue, the sound of a dire sewer rat was heard and Arthur soon spotted it approaching him from the distance. Let's go. Arthur was ready. Slash. Fatal hit. 0.100% HP. Dire sewer rat has been killed experience obtained 2%, the basic dire sewer rats die in one hit, but also give less experience now. Arthur knew this would happen, but didn't expect it to be this low. He could only hope to obtain more experience by killing more mobs. Squeak. 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 It didn't take him long to find more of them either as he soon came across several dire sewer rats with a large dire sewer rat included. A few swings were all it took for Arthur to kill them and his experience bar was now at the 65% point. Even the large dire sewer rats only give 5% experience gain. Arthur noted the falling experience gain. He continued onwards and soon reached the end of the tunnel after 10 more minutes. This time, he was in a new area. Half of the area was the same as the rest of the sewer, but the rest was natural. This should be the end of the sewer. Arthur said, after looking at the solid rock walls and soil on the ground. There were channels from the sewer flowing here and continuing towards the rock walls. There the water entered through the crevices and disappeared. This was the natural drain of the water that probably went to the outside. But that wasn't what Arthur was here for. There's the boss, and the real goal of the mission. Arthur looked at a certain rat. Quest updated. Chapter 21st Boss You are listening at NovelFull.audio Arthur looked at the quest window that had just popped up. Quest updated. Quest. 1. Investigate the sewers. Completed. 2. Inform the village head about it or release the sluice gate. Completed, 3. Report to the village head about the skeleton in the reservoir and bring him proof. 4. Kill the giant dire rat and report back to the village head with proof. Info. 1. You have chanced upon the sewers of the Kestrel village. Search and see what secrets it hides, but also beware of the dangers that lurk within it. 2. You chose to open the sluice gate and released the pressure. Some new areas might now be available to explore for you. 3. You have found a skeleton in the reservoir of the sewer. Why has the skeleton appeared here and who does it belong to? Bring the skull back as a proof. 4. You have discovered the boss of the Kestrel village sewers, the giant dire sewer rat. It can pose great danger to the structural integrity of the sewer and might collapse it. Kill it and bring back its tail as a proof to the village head. Grade. Uncommon difficulty. Intermediate reward. The fourth and final quest objective had finally appeared and it was what Arthur had been waiting for. Let's see what we're up against, first shall we. 
Arthur muttered before using inspect on the creature. Ding inspect successful. Target. Giant dire sewer rat, boss, rank. Uncommon level. 5 HP 100% MP 100%, huh, it's lower than what was in the guide. Arthur was a bit surprised seeing the boss's information. According to what he could remember, the guide had mentioned that the giant dire rat was a boss that was level 6. But from what Arthur could see now, it was clearly a level lower. Does it level grow over time? Arthur wondered. It wasn't something that was impossible either. In Morpheus Online, there were dynamic changes all the time, whether it be the environment, the NPCs, or the enemies. All of them could change over time and it was influenced by many factors. The best examples were monster subjugation quests or large-scale war quests. If one failed in a monster subjugation quest and their numbers exceeded a certain amount, these monsters would then attack various entitlements. This could either result in the destruction of the settlement and the death of NPCs or retaliation from the NPCs and death of the monsters. Both factors would depend on how the players handled the matter. While in the case of large-scale war quests, it was a lot more complex. Not only could the very territories change, one could even lose access to many areas they were able to visit in the past. Of course on the other hand, one had a great chance of obtaining a lot of items and skills as well. How things progressed in Morpheus Online depended on the actions of the players, but their inaction could also bring forth unseen events. The giant dire sewer rat boss could be considered one of them. The guide was made several months after the launch of the game. Perhaps that time was enough for the boss monster to grow another level. Arthur reckoned. Still, this just makes things simpler for me. Arthur was pleased by this surprise. But he didn't attack right away. He first assessed the area, making sure that there would be no unpleasant surprises. Hmm, there are no supporting enemies along with the boss. Arthur verified. Guess the ones I killed earlier might have been them. The number of supporting enemies also used to be higher according to the guide. He recalled. Originally this fight was supposed to be against the boss and its minions. It would involve the giant dire sewer rat and several large dire sewer rats and the basic dire sewer rats. It wasn't a fight that was meant for a solo player either and was intended for a party of at least three players. This was something that would have been difficult for Arthur too, but since he had the black tear short sword he had the confidence in going against the boss. It should give plenty of experience points too. Arthur said before taking a look at the torch in his hand. It won't last that long. I'll need to finish the fight before that. Fighting without illumination spells is a pain in areas like this. He thought. Dot with the level of immersion that Morpheus Online offered, there were no lack of dark areas. The players would need to explore these areas as well as fight mobs there. But the biggest obstacle for many was the lack of light there. This could be mitigated by using items like torches or lanterns of course but they had their own advantages and disadvantages. The advantage was that they were very cheap and could be made by the players themselves without needing any special skills. The disadvantage was that they would take up an equipment slot and might hamper the actions of a player. Of course, there were other more efficient methods to mitigate these two. The best and most used being none other than illumination magic. It was learned by most magic class players and was an integral part of any party. Of course, there were other methods to use it too which could even be utilized by non-magic class players. These were none other than single-use items like scrolls, talismans and many more. These could be used to cast these spells and were also relatively cheap. But for Arthur they were out of his choices. It wouldn't be much later that these objects would become available. After all, it was just the start of the game and Arthur had gone out of his way to come to a high-leveled area like this. I'll have to divert its attention and strike first, only that way will I have the upper hand, Arthur raised the torch before throwing it to the left of the giant dire sewer rat.